What's up Warrior Warriors and welcome back to another video. Today I want to chat to you about a nice simple technique to kind of condense down the time that you spend training because often if we're going by all the social media sort of stuff you have to be working on your handstands, your strength, your flexibility, this different technique, this new technique, all of these sort of things and oftentimes it's you know either feels like it's impossible to find the time to fit that all in, you feel like maybe you've got a bit of FOMO, missing out on some extra gains because you're not doing stuff and ultimately you miss out on doing what the important thing is, which is just being consistent with the basics. But today I wanna to share with you, as I said, a nice simple technique to add in some extra flexibility work during your normal training session to obviously improve your flexibility, but also potentially improve the hypertrophy response and also increase your performance. We're gonna go through a few different methods about doing it. For me, this is probably the most common technique that I use with my flexibility work. It works really nicely just to keep greasing those positions throughout your training session. Usually I do it a lot with handstands, kick up, do some handstands, sit down, come sit in a stretch, rest for a bit, rinse, repeat for the whole session. And actually you get a surprising amount of work done so it can be just as simple as that, but of course there is some nuance to this. So I wanna share with you a few different types of interset stretching. Let's jump into it. So essentially we have direct, indirect, and synergic interset stretching. This isn't an official thing, this is my own personal interpretation. So first of all, let's talk about direct inset stretching. Now I would classify this as when you're gonna stretch the muscles that you're working in the sets. Now this may seem a little bit counterintuitive and it might have an inhibitory effect on performance, but we'll get into that one in a second. However, for hypertrophy, this can actually be a useful method. And it was something that was used by the legendary bodybuilder, Frank Zane, which in my opinion, had one of the best physiques of that era. The dude looked awesome. Aside from the steroids, one of his key focuses when it comes to developing the physique that he had was stretching the muscles being trained in the rest periods of those sets. There is obviously the concern that this will affect performance, and this is kind of true. We went over a little bit of this in the foam roller literature review that I did. I'll link to that video down below. Um, but essentially, doing excessively long stretching will have an inhibitory response on performance. It's gonna reduce it down, but it's dose dependent. You hold it for three minutes, it's gonna have a dramatic effect. If you hold it for 30 to 60 seconds, the effect's probably gonna be relatively insignificant. In fact, probably not gonna make a massive difference in most cases. But ultimately, if you're gonna use this technique, it shouldn't be around absolute maximal strength. Now this 2020 review looked at 10 different studies covering the use of stretching and muscle hypertrophy. Now this is kind of limited research, but there were some indications that there could be some benefit. There's a few other studies as well, which have shown a positive response, specifically a paper by Mohamed et al from 2011, looked at using interset stretching for developing hypertrophy. They argued that stretching the same muscle group being worked can influence time under tension. At the end of the day, that stretch feeling is a contraction, especially if we're gonna actively focus on doing some contractions in that end range when we're stretching. But there is also gonna be the associated neuromuscular, metabolic, and hormonal responses to the that activity. So a very simple implementation of this would be, okay, let's say we're doing some pull-ups. We can do our set of pull-ups and then simply at the end of that set of pull-ups, we can actually just remain in a hanging position for another 20 or 30 seconds at the end. Or we could come down and do some form of active lat stretch. This one is super, super simple. Next up, we have indirect stretching. Now this one's a little bit quicker to explain and essentially is the opposite to the first one. It's gonna be stretching muscles that are completely unrelated to the movement that we're doing. A very simple example of this would be using an upper lower split. On our upper body days, we could implement in some lower body stretching in our rest period, some nice chilled out static passive stuff, nothing too intense and just stretching various muscles. It's not gonna have any impact or any relation to our upper body training. And likewise, if we're training lower body, we can stretch out our upper body as well. And it's not gonna have any impact on the performance or the hypertrophy or anything else in that session. It's just about making the most of that time that you have in the rest period and getting some flexibility work in. Lastly, we're gonna to come to synergic interset stretching. This is essentially when we're gonna use some flexibility work in our interset period to complement the focus of the main training session that we're doing. We're focusing here on stretching in a way that's going to increase our performance in the subsequent sets. Probably easier to give a couple of examples to this one, but let me briefly explain the why. First off, we have antagonistic stretching. So what this would be is the opposite to the direct stretching. Instead of stretching the muscles that's being worked, we're gonna stretch the opposing muscles to the muscles being worked. Now this is a popular technique used by Charles Poliquin, fantastic strength and conditioning coach, because part of being stronger or more efficient in a movement is understanding how to have an inhibitory effect on the muscles opposing the ones that we're trying to train. And by stretching those muscles in between our sets, 
as we alluded to in the first exercise that stretching can have an inhibitory effect on muscles hence why it's not great for performance if we're going to stretch the muscles being worked However, if we stretch the opposing muscles, it can give us a performance boost. This is also part of the reason why poor flexibility can reduce performance because it's gonna be more resistant to getting in a position in which we can generate force. Now this has actually been quite well documented in the literature. I'll link to a, a couple of studies in which this is shown, but let me give you a nice simple example. Say we're performing some body weight rows and we're looking to get that nice extension and drive the elbow back behind us to maximally contract the lats, the mid back, all of that sort of stuff. What we can do in our rest period is stretch out the horizontal adductors, which in this case would be the pec major. By adding some stretches here, it's gonna help us more maximally contract the lat and the bicep and make us stronger and probably perform more reps in that rowing movement. Likewise, if we are performing a push-up or perhaps a bench press, we can stretch out the rear delts and the same is gonna be true. We're gonna see an increase in performance of that pushing movement. Again, a very nice simple one that we can add to our training that's gonna have a good impact on our performance, but for developing long-term flexibility, I don't think it's gonna have much of an impact. Next up for this synergic stretching, we have position stretching. And this would be a little bit different from that antagonist stretching because this time we're focusing on how can we develop positions better so that it will then complement our main lifts. Again, an example is probably easier in this instance. Let's say we're training the press to handstand. Now the press to handstand is very dependent on having good pancake flexibility and good compression to perform a solid rep. Now what we can do is we can do our set of our pressed handstand or whatever it is that we're training. And then in our rest periods, we're simply gonna stretch the pancake. It's unrelated to the actual muscles in which we're gonna be using for the majority of the pressed handstand. But by having a better pancake, by having better compression through that inset stretching, it's gonna enable us to perform the sets at a better quality of work. Another example would be if we're performing a squatting session and perhaps we have tight ankles and this is gonna inhibit our ability to get into a good squat. We can do some intercept stretching of the ankles in a way that's not gonna affect performance, but is gonna help us get into a better position to generate more force and perform the set with higher quality. This particular example of stretching is really nice for long-term flexibility gains because we're actually doing one of the most important things when it comes to flexibility and that is using the range of motion. We're stretching and then we're implementing, we're stretching and we're implementing. It's a real nice way to integrate these flexibility patterns into our training in a functional way because we're actually gonna be using it. So hopefully this one helps you out. I think this is quite a nice doing and good practical advice video. Um, it's something that I use a lot with myself and with clients. It's just a nice way of squeezing more training into less time and ultimately that's gonna be pretty good for everyone. If you're gonna give some of these methods a try, we plan it particularly useful, or perhaps you have your own particular method of intercept stretching, let me know in the comments section down below. While you're down there, you can also hit that thumbs up button and support the channel if you enjoyed this video. Right next to it is that subscribe button. If you wanna join the Bodyweight Warrior Tribe and don't miss out on any more future videos. But that's basically been it for this week, guys. I'll catch you in the next episode. Have a strong week.